This tutorial is going to cover some uh, advanced tips and tricks for Digital Anarchy's Primat. Primat is a plugin for Photoshop and other applications that support Photoshop plugins, such as Photoshop Elements and Jask Paint Shop Pro. It's a tool designed for doing chroma key masking, which is the removal of solid color backgrounds. And this is something that's used quite frequently in film and television. Primat itself has been used on many feature films, including Harry Potter, Spy Kids, Castaway, and a whole host of other ones. So it's definitely been battle-tested in production, and uh, it's something that's relatively new for Photoshop, at least this version, with some of the more advanced features that are used for film and television. And so we're going to talk about some of the advanced tips and tricks that can be used with Primat to kind of help it along if there are any problems. Many times Primat will work just fine as is, and sometimes you need to help it along a little bit, but it will make your life easier either way. So let's uh, jump into some of those. So the first thing I want to talk about is garbage mats. Now Primat works best when you have a solid color background. It doesn't work as well if there are all sorts of shades of green, as is the case here. And this isn't even that bad, but it works much better if you just have a flat, evenly lit background. As with many things, lighting is just of the utmost importance. Correct lighting when you're shooting the images will save you a ton of work when you get back into Photoshop. The saying that you can always fix it in post certainly applies here because you can't always fix it in post. It's just going to take you three or four times longer. One way to deal with multiple shades of gray and uneven lighting is to create a garbage mat. Now you can do this several ways. Basically a garbage mat is a rough drawn mat around your object that's designed to get rid of extraneous stuff around the outside, like the shades of green up in these corners. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can grab the lasso tool and just kind of draw in here and, oops, and draw around it. And get something that looks like this and then we can invert this and and so that's fine. That's one way of doing it. You can either do that or use the pen tool to create a path and then turn that into a selection. But something that's a little bit easier is using the magic wand tool, which in this case works really well. I'll just click on the background here and we've got a pretty good mask already right off the bat. And we can contract this a little bit. Come up to our selection tools, go to modify and contract. And get it about five pixels off the star. And then we can just grab a color. We can sample a green shade that's in here. And we can fill that entire thing by going to Edit and Fill. And click OK. And now if we deselect this, you can see that we've got a pretty even shade of green around the background, which is going to make it much easier to key everything out. And now you're saying, well, why do I need Primat? If I can just do it with the magic wand tool, why don't I just use that? Well, the magic wand tool works fine for the outside here where we've got nice solid edges and everything's nice and clean. But what happens when you want to get rid of the green that's showing through the fabric here? What happens when you want to get rid of the green that's showing through the glass? You can't do that with the magic wand tool. And that's one of the strengths of Primat is dealing with these semi-transparent areas. You can certainly, if you have solid, hard-edged objects, you can certainly use the Magic Wand tool and other tools in Photoshop, like the Extract Filter. And those work very well for things with hard edges where you're not dealing with a lot of transparency. But once you start getting into transparency, it's much more difficult to deal with. And so that's where Primat comes in, and it really shows its use. So now that we've created this garbage mat, now that we've knocked out, gotten rid of all the darker shades of green, around here, it's going to be much easier to pull the key on this. So let's jump into Primat. And by default, Primat remembers the last settings you applied. So if you have a sequence of images that are shot against the same background, in many cases you can just load them up into Primat and click Apply and it'll take care of it automatically. And you can use actions with Primat. 
So if you want to script everything and batch it, you can do that as well. But in this case, we're going to reset everything. And as with any Primat session, the first thing you need to do is select the color that you want to key out. And in that case, it's this color. And so we'll just click in the background. And so, of course, it removes that color from the entire image. And that's, of course, not what we want. We want to remove it from the background, but we want to keep the solid areas solid. So let's go to our mask view mode and see what we can do about that. Quite often when using Primat, there is a little bit of luck involved and also a bit of trial and error as you try and find the sweet spot that's really going to make your mask come out and give you what you want. Either knock out all the black spots or really just pull up the solid areas. And part of learning how to use Primat is learning how to find those sweet spots. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing in the rest of this tutorial. So we have our star and by selecting the background color, selecting the key color, we've managed to make practically the entire thing transparent. If we take a look at our composite, you'll see that this thing is mostly gone. And what we need to do is find the solid areas on this star. They're going to pop this star back to life, make the solid areas opaque and still maintain the transparency that we want in the semi-transparent areas, such as the mesh and the glass down here. So what we need to do is find areas on this star that are completely solid. So if we look at the original image, you can see that it's a bunch of metal rods with fabric wrapped around it. So obviously the metal rods are completely opaque. They're pretty solid. So what we can do is grab our clean foreground tool because that's what we need to do because most of it is right now Primat thinks practically everything is background it thinks everything should be transparent and we've got nice solid blacks back here so there's no concerns about the background but the foreground has all sorts of issues so what we need to do is grab our clean foreground tool and click on the areas that are solid now it's pretty difficult to see what we should click on here so the easiest way is just to grab the clean foreground tool and go to the original image, go to the foreground view mode, and click on the metal bits. And we'll just click down like that. And boom. When we come back to mask, we are in much better shape. We've popped out a lot of the metal rods. We still have quite a bit of problems down here and throughout it, but at least now we have some solid areas that we can see and that we can latch on to. So let's continue clicking on solid areas. If you're not sure if something's solid or not, we can always come back to the front, the foreground view and use that as a guide. So we'll just click along here. And of course that brings that back in. Click along this edge, which we know to be solid. That's gonna pop the star out even more. And so now the star is looking pretty good. Now obviously this is solid metal, so we'll get that. So now we're in pretty good shape. If we go back to our composite mode, a little bit right there, there we go. Now if we go back to our composite mode, you're going to see that the star is in excellent shape. We really have it solid in the areas it needs to be. It's still transparent in the areas it needs to be as well. But we have an issue with the green showing through some of the mesh areas. And that happens all the time. Anytime you have transparent areas, you're going to have green showing through. Sometimes it's not going to be immediately obvious how to get rid of the green and maintain the transparency. But once you've gotten the transparency, that's where the color correction tools kick in. And you can now start trying to get rid of this green with the spill suppression tools. So we'll grab spill minus. And we'll just start clicking and dragging on this mesh, which has some green in it. And you can see that we've done, with just a few clicks in the right areas, we've gotten rid of that green spill. And again, this is where the experience comes in as far as knowing where to click. Because it's a little bit of trial and error trying to find out what spots, what green spots, are really going to get rid of it throughout the entire image. There are plenty of areas where you'll click on green and it'll get rid of it in that one spot. 
but then the rest of the image is still covered in green spill. And it's something to know that the way Primat works, of course, is all based on similar shades of green, or similar shades. And so if you can find the right shade of green over here, it'll get rid of it in the entire image. So that's an important thing to know about Primat when you're clicking around and trying to get rid of green spill or trying to make things transparent. It's all based on similar colors. So if you can find something that is kind of in between the colors over here and the colors down here, you'll find that by clicking on that just that one area, you'll get rid of all of it. So it looks like we've done a great job on the star, and everything looks pretty good. But whenever you're using Primat, you should always try and make sure you check it on a couple of different backgrounds. Unless you know for sure that it's going to be on a particular background, it's best to try it on a dark background and try it on a light background to make sure you didn't miss anything. So if we come up here, we can composite against color. This is going to be our kind of neutral gray. And that's fine, and you can try it against a lighter color if you so desire. But neutral gray is a good measure to show it against because it really will show up all sorts of things that you wouldn't see if you have a busy, noisy background like what we have here. This is very good, and this is going to be the final background. That's what you should be compositing it against. But if you're not sure what the background is, if it's up to a client or up to you know, the person you've done the studio photography with, you may want to just make sure that... Uh, it looks good on gray, looks good on a maybe light yellow background. Always a good color to check it against. You can always see where your transparent areas are. And we'll go back to 50% gray. But so we're in pretty good shape there. Now we want to do one last check of the mask to make sure that we're not missing anything. And we're looking all right, but we still have some transparency in the balls in the glass down here, and there really shouldn't be any. So we want to come down to our clean foreground tool and clean that up. Because what's gonna happen is, as we change backgrounds, you're gonna be able to see the background through those balls. And since they're pretty solid and opaque. That's not the behavior that we would usually expect. So we've cleaned that up. Now let's go take a look again to our composite mode. And that's looking okay. It looks like we've introduced a little bit of green. So we can come down here and grab our spill sponge and clean that up just a little bit. And it looks like we're in good shape. So now we can click Apply, and that'll take us back out into Photoshop. And now we can start mixing and matching our backgrounds. Drop it in front of that background and see that we still have nice transparency in the mesh. So the background's showing through. We've got nice transparency in the glass, and we have nice solid areas as well. You can't see the background through the opaque areas, and that's very important. So again, the trick to Primat is making sure that you know where the solid areas are supposed to be and where the fully transparent areas are supposed to be, and giving Primat something it can work with right off the bat, like our garbage mat that we created in the beginning. And so it's important to reduce the number of shades in the background either by, you know, correct lighting right off the bat, or by creating a garbage mat once you're in Photoshop, which is what we did with the Magic Wand tool. And then it's a matter of finding the sweet spots for telling Primat what's transparent, what isn't transparent, and so on. So I hope you found this informative, and check out our other tutorials on Primat.